Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project and Magnetic Reversal News. Bringing you a Grand Solar Minimum update fresh back from Crestone just moments ago on Monday, August 19th at 1 a.m. Mountain Time 2019. Now, I can tell you that the Crestone Energy Fair was a smashing success. And by the looks on the faces of the people at the opening ceremonies, it says nothing less than that. In fact, I met this woman uh, Saturday, and just today, we she uh, is the keeper of indigenous seeds from many tribes around North America, and we were able to share some of our seeds from our permaculture orchard with her in return for some of the indigenous tobacco seeds that are growing here in Crestone at 8,000 feet, as well as some uh, sweet corn. Very excited about that seed sharing. Keep calm. It is boom time. Severe thunderstorms and flash flooding to target New York and Oklahoma through Sunday, which will not be a fun day because it's almost over. And it doesn't look very fun in these pictures. Many locations across the Great Lakes and Plains, which have dealt with multiple rounds of thunderstorms over the past week, will have to endure additional severe weather threats through Sunday. The same disturbances that brought severe weather across the central and northern plains Saturday totally flux the region again on Sunday. How do I know? Here's a picture. New Jersey, New Jersey weather, thousands without power as storm drops hail the size of golf balls. Mini golf balls, apparently. Hail nearly as large as mini golf balls fell in Frenchtown. Oh, those French people in New Jersey. Here we are at Power Outage US to check the data. There is over 120,000 people in the upper 48 here, currently in the dark. And we were reporting on New Jersey, which only has 1,600 customers out currently. 20,000 in PA, 14,000 in New York, almost 30, look at that, almost 33,000 in Ohio. Heads up, Michigan, 21,725 and 11,000 plus in Indiana. It's looking like nearly 30,000 with the power out in Texas. Big numbers tonight. Seven children, two adults injured after lightning strikes a downed tree. Uh, this is amazing. This is literally a few miles from where I grew up my entire life in Bucks County. Thankfully, I wasn't there at the time, nor was I at that swim club. No one was severely injured. Glacier National Park sees snow in August. Between one inch and trace amounts were recorded as we predicted. Not only that, we predicted it. August 28th storm, which is really looking like it's uh, lining up to be one for the record books. The Missoula National Weather Service recorded between one inch and trace amounts of snow falling near the Canadian border of Glacier in the summer. And on my way back from Crestone, there is still snow at less than 12,000 feet here uh, at Wolf Creek Pass. And if it begins snowing here anytime soon, that snow will be the first time in a very long time that snow has made it through a winter. And that is how glaciers form, just like in Glacier National Park, where we can clearly see here there is still snow remaining here from last year, potentially, falling again on top of old snow. That's how the glaciers grow. That's why they took the signs down. Summer snow, northern BC braces for a freak snowstorm. Had they been watching our channel, they probably would have been ready for it. Environment. And Climate Change Canada, I can't believe they just added that. Did they really just do that? Has posted a snowfall warning for the middle of summer. There, It can't be more middle of summer than this. And you get a snowfall warning for up to 30 centimeters of snow to pummel the region. Heavy snowfall to hit northeastern BC, up to 30 centimeters expected. Fort Nelson, Muncho Lake Park. It's boom time, Al Gore style. Shut up, Al! Get in your hole! It snowed in Canada this weekend, and it was not in the Arctic. I know. Not in the Arctic, Al. No fun cake. Whew, that Ready or not, it's back. Summer's in the middle, and snow's back already. What's your standard for warmth? <laughs> not snow. Thanks to an unusually fall-like system spinning over the northern prairies, winter was able to sneak back into northern BC in the middle, the dog days of summer. What a bummer for global warmists, because they have to read that. That's on the mainstream. Summer heat in multiple spots. 
Well, thank God summer is actually in a few places across the northern U.S. <laughs> wow. Summer heat in a few spots in the middle of summer. That should be breaking news in the middle of a global warming world. Summer is actually happening in a few places in the middle of summer. Amazing. A large dome of high pressure is expected to deliver summer heat with humidity in a few places across the globe. There will be heat warnings in effect in a couple of states. Yes, the rest of us. I mean, it feels like fall already. Why is there shock and distrust, distrust among U.S. farmers? Well, because they just shaved and their, their razors weren't that sharp. They can feel it. Actually, it's the USDA and their fraudulent numbers. It turns out a record-setting number of acres were not planted. And yet the USDA is claiming record increases in corn production this year. Now, let me just show you some of these amazing non-plant numbers. In 2019, there was 11.2 million prevent plant corn acres compared to 4.35 million soybean acres. Now, this compares to the record levels ever recorded for prevent planting for corn was 3.6 versus 11.2. That's a difference of a, a ton. Yeah. It's almost four times difference. And for soybeans, it's even, it's just as bad, almost double. 2.2 million was the record in 2015 prevent plant, 4.35 million this year. Yet the USDA is claiming an increase in bushels over last year for both corn and soybeans. That's where the shock and distrust comes because someone is fucking lying. And it's certainly not the farmers. More snow, chilly air aim at southeastern Australia to close the weekend. Totally a bummer. Parisia has received 20 centimeters of snow overnight, and there's no sign of it slowing down. More snow in the forecast. It would be a record season in Parisia. 14 centimeters snow falls in Fall Creek. More on the way. Slip another shrimp on the barbie, won't you? Check out the bomb. Latest forecast for the morning in Central Tablelands shows blue squares everywhere. Holy sh! It's snowing. Awesome. It's puking at Parisia. Puking, literally. Puking. What does that mean? In Australian, that means snowing. So that at any moment, kangaroos will be running past this region. And people with barbecues and shrimps and other things... Totally amazing. I want to draw your attention down here if we can just scroll down and actually get the data if they haven't removed it already. There's amazing amounts of snow also in Tasmania coming down. Apparently they have a fetish here. Adelaide Hills, South Australia, snowing. Widespread snow. Tazzy snow. Holy smack snowly. Did I just say that? Anyway, it also snowed in other places that are really cold. Torrential downpour in Turkey triggers deadly flooding thanks to cosmic rays and unprepared people. They thought it was going to be hot and they were burning up. And then they saw sea levels rise real quickly. As four inches of rain fell, Istanbul was fluxed. If you care, read more. Seismic update, no quakes of note, 5.2 in the middle of nowhere, South Sandwich. I'm getting hungry. I hope there's mayo. Eruption update, Strombolian volcano, intense activity continues, lava flow of the Sierra del Fuco Uo. Yes, they even trademarked that. Activity at the volcano remains very high. Frequent and often strong Strombolian eruptions occur from several active vents in the crater terrace. At least one tourist was killed, as predicted by Diamond, a year ago this year. The effusion of lava from the southwest rim of the crater rim seems to have increased its activity, and it is keying its eyes on some fresh tourists heading its way. Worldwide Volcano News Update. <whistles> Heads up, nothing spectacular, but lots to report on. Sangue API explosive activity continues to 8,000 feet. Reventador explosive activity continues to 17,000 feet. Sabancaya 
Sporadic puffs to 25,000 feet as explosive activity continues. Dukono continues volcanic ash emissions as explosive activity continues, erupting to 6,000. Popo, possible ongoing volcanic ash currently to 20,000 as explosive activity continues. As you can see, Cadavar, explosive activity continuing, as well as Nevados de Chilan, volcanic ash advisory continuing. <whistles> Lots of continuations of volcanic activity. Now, let's learn about some facts and close up the video, shall we? 10 minutes, 37 seconds in. And I'm sure you've seen this breaking across multiple multinational corporation headline syndicates. Scientists bid farewell to the first Icelandic glacier lost to climate change. It was a funeral memorial like none other. Glad I missed it. <laughs> now, they're talking about the Okjokul Glacier. It was a glacier in western Iceland on top of the volcano mountain OK. First declared dead by Udur Sigurdsson, anthropologists Laimi Howe and Dominic Boyer, filming a documentary a year and a half ago. And proposed to mark its end with a plaque. It was memorialized August 18th, 2019, with a plaque bearing a note written by Andrei Schneier Morgensen titled, A Letter to the Future, and reading in Icelandic and English. It said, OK is the first Icelandic glacier to lose its status as a glacier. True. In the next 200 years, all of our glaciers are expected to follow the same path. False. This moment is to acknowledge that we know what's happening and what needs to be done. False. Only you will know if we did it. <laughs> this is the dumbest waste of money that any group of idiots could ever do. Because none of them even know about the history of the glacier that they're claiming is dead. And it has nothing to do with man or anthropogenic global warming or any of the climate change bullshit that these people are indoctrinated in a religious fashion to bloviate and speculate and, and capitulate and have a funeral for nonsense. What a waste of the entire lives of these people spent worrying about nothing that matters. Now, this glacier, very little people know about it. Or the history of it. It's in the Langoyokal group and it's a small cupola style mountain glacier located north of a snowfield summit crater on OK. In fact, it barely meets the criteria of a glacier in the last 50 years because neither does it build nor does it flow nor does it calf or does it go anywhere. So it's basically a large ice field or a rock glacier, a remnant of some long lost time. That's what they call those. And, and that long lost time was way before global warming was ever invented and perpetrated on the masses. Not only that, this glacier has lost over 90% of its mass before 1950 based on data. Now let's le listen to the global warmest representation of what happened here. Iceland's first glacier lost to climate change will be remembered with a monument to be unveiled next month, blippity bloppity blue. And by the year 2200, <laughs> which no one will be alive or remember any of this information, 400 plus glaciers will be gone. Said no one ever but these frauds that are making up a fairy tale that might as well be told to children because all the children are being told fairy tales anyway in school. Now, let's get to the facts of this tiny little remnant ice field on top of this mountain. The only known data comes from Bjornsson, who describes how OK, this glacier, shrank rapidly during the 20th century as we came out of the mini ice age. Like all other disappearing glaciers, they began to rapidly melt before you had any effect. In 1901, the glacier measured 38 square kilometers. By 1910, it measured 15 square kilometers. By 1945, the glacier had disappeared 
and only showed an extent of five kilometers. And it's because of you that it is now gone in 2016, where it still had measured under one kilometer. So since 1945 to, to present, five kilometers disappeared in 50 years. But from 1901 to 1910, half of the glacier, yeah, 18 kilometers melted in nine years, and it took 50 years, 60 years, 61 years to melt five more because of you, because of man. Do you see how ludicrous this math doesn't even work out? You actually caused the, gr the glacier to last longer and melt slower than it naturally did prior to global warming. Those are facts. This plaque is a waste of money and a fraud. It is complete useless information. It should be shit on and burned and thrown away. And whoever is responsible for it and the tens of thousands of misappropriated money, those people should be in prison. Prison! Now, I rarely do a shout, shout out for other channels that I don't know. But this is for the best damn podcast. They have been growing. And um, this information is important. The title sucks, but the information doesn't. So I'll link you to this video and tell them to change the fucking title. So that people can actually understand what it fucking means. Maybe come on my channel so I can stick my foot up their ass. Blazing River. Subscribe to the channel. This guy lives in Crestone. He befriended me. He bought me an infused uh, joint from the local dispensary that we shared after my final talk. He's a musician. He's just a gener generous, awesome guy. He took me out to uh, <clears throat> some megalithic stone huts. I'm going to share you with those videos shortly. Tomorrow, I'm going to have a premiere on one of my talks. All of the talks at Crestone will be posted. Big shout out to Ransom, 420 Freedom as Films, who helped out during the weekend, and his son, uh, who helped man the stand while I spoke, as well as Alien Allen for coming out from Cannon City and always stepping up to the plate and helping out when really no one asked. He deserves all the love. Alien Allen, we love you. Also, 420 Freedom as Films. Moss Free was there playing harmonica. But Rex Bear never showed up. So let's subscribe over at Blazing River and look at his last piece. He hasn't posted in five, six years. But he posted six months ago, and it's pretty good stuff. Tell him Diamond sent you. He's going to be very surprised. Guys, I hope you got something out of the video. I'm exhausted. I've been driving all weekend. I've been talking all weekend. I made so many new friends. The Crestone Energy Fair was awesome. Even though the beginning talk, the keynote speaker, literally spoke for one hour and repeated all of the global warming talking points that were completely disprovable in an instant if you do any research. I heard like glo uh, polar bears dying and glaciers melting and, and the ice caps are disappearing because no one cares to look at the information. If you want to find it all in one place, quickly go to electroverse.net, Cap Allen's blog. And on the right side, he has the lower, the UAH lower global atmospheric temperatures. And you can see the temperature on Earth has dropped a half a degree in the last four years. You can look at the latest Arctic sea ice thickness and see that we are in multi-decadal norms. And in fact, we're, it's one of the first years we're building ice this early in August in decades. Following the multi-decadal average of everyone who's listening's life. There's no catastrophic loss of Arctic ice, Greenland ice, all of it's BS. Look at how much the Greenland ice sheet is building in the north right now as I speak. It is now surpassing multi-decadal averages. As I predicted four weeks ago, 
I'm not making this up. Go look at the video. I repeated it day after day. I said by mid-August, this blue line is going to hit the gray line and go past it. And no one in the mainstream is going to be telling you how amazing the ice is building in Greenland today. It's just like it was for the last 40 years. We won. Global warming is over today. Take a look at the graph. We love each and every one of you. Thank you for all the fans that came out to Crestone Energy Fair. There was at least a dozen people that drove 100 or more miles just to shake my hand. And I shared over six ounces of free cannabis with hundreds of people. We gave out free seeds. We made new friends and shared information on how we can survive and thrive in the future. People paid with bubble hash, keef brick, magic mushrooms. Very little cash was exchanged, except from the guy that owns the Cloud Cafe and also the supermarket in Crestone. He kicks ass and takes names. If you have a chance, visit Crestone. It is an awesome place filled with awesome people doing awesome things. Be safe. We love you.